So, I was trying to figure out what would be interesting for beginners. Um, I had a few ideas, and then somebody made a suggestion that maybe I should do upset square corners. So, dropped everything else and went with that. So, there's quite a few videos on upset square corners out there. Uh, figured I'd make one that was slightly different because it features a nice internal radius which looks quite smart uh, this is the way I do them on uh, decorative ironwork I'll be making this upset square corner out of three pieces of metal two are 12 square, one is 25 by 12 so 25 by 12 will be the actual upset corner and we're going to scarf weld the 12 square into position Make sure you have the right tongs for the section that you're forging because you are going to be forging it quite heavily. So you could do with tongs which will fit around it nicely and hold it steady and stop it from bouncing around. So we'll be starting with the 25 by 12 Give it a good scrub. Always give your metal a good scrub before forging. Knock the scale off. And I'm just going to go roughly in the middle and using the bick of the anvil do a nice rounded set down. I'm going to do this in one heat, so start hot. This is just to show that it can be done I'm using a reasonably heavy hammer and uh, just drawing it out over the bick. You can see how easily the metal draws out over the bick. Keep spinning your work to make sure that you are forging all four sides evenly. And again I'm going to get the appropriate tongs for the section that I'm holding. And do the other side. And you want to leave an apex in the centre of the bar. See, this is moving quite quick. Uh, didn't feel the need to go over to the power hammer for this. Don't know if he's gotten bored yet. So I left the apex a little bit rough because we're going to refine it later on. But because I'm going to be scarf welding 12 square onto the ends I'm going to upset the bits that I've just forged down mainly to make sure that they're uh, square and to put a uh, chamfer on the end as well for the scarf so like in the scarf welding video I'm upsetting at a bit of an angle that will help pre-shape for the scarf. Not really cutting these clips down to a useful length because uh, I want to show show the metal moving if you see what I mean. And that's the upset chamfer formed on the end of the bar and that just that just helps create a welding line rather than a shearing line. So for the scarf you want the toe of the scarf to be quite short, be as short as you dare because that just means that you've got less of a surface area to weld and it makes the welding easier. Your hammer's coming in perpendicular to the edge of the anvil uh, just to form the toe of the scarf. And there's the finished scarf. So next, keep your fire high because you're going to be scarf welding. And you want to upset uh, the 12 square. So cool it off. And you're just upsetting the end which is going to be the scarf. As you can see I'm belting the metal quite hard. Uh, 
It's the quickest way to do it. And don't worry, it's not going to hit you back. And you want the heat to be quite short to stop it from bending away. Upsetting thin sections like 12 square are always kind of think of beauty pageants for midgets. Short and hot. And if you got it right, it should fit together thus. That's almost like an anti-racism video, isn't it? A black hand and a white hand. Classed together. Going off on one here. So, next to pour coke on the apex of the fire. Just have a nice tall fire there. Low oxidising layer. Again, watch some scarf welding with you. A little bit more detail in that. So, I'm going to use three welding heats. First one to tuck it together. I'm not using any flux. Flux is pointless for mild steel. Second heat to actually weld it. I'm not spending very long forging because I want it to be blended in properly. So here goes the third heat, blend in, hide the scarfs, and uh, start forging to section as well with this heat. Any roughly, I will uh, forge it to 12 square after the next stage, so at the moment it's just roughing it out. You can see that I'm forging to section, I am only hitting it where it needs to be hit. Hitting it anywhere else is only going to make it thinner than you want it to be. Uh, and you can see that I'm hammering above the same spot of the anvil and I'm moving the work rather than the hammer. You'll see this a bit more clearly when I actually forge it down to section. So it's both sides welded up and you can see that uh, scarf's gone in quite nicely. You could have forged the whole thing out of 25 by 12 and just drawn it out but I wanted it to be a little bit longer and to simulate, simulate a piece that was going on um, a larger project. So next we're going to refine the apex which is going to be the square corner. I'm just forging that down to 12mm thick. And you don't want the base of the apex to be any thinner than 12 square. So next I'm going to clean up the forging and make sure it's all right thickness and even, even thickness. So again you can see that I'm only forging it where it needs to be forged over the thick bits. You can kind of see where the thick bits are by rotating it and I am rotating it so that I'm hammering on all four faces um, and that is to make sure that it doesn't go off into a lozenge shape. Uh, I'm using my wide faced hammer uh, and that using a wide faced hammer just reduces the chance of uh, hammer marks coming in quite flat takes a bit of practice not to leave hammer marks, but it's well worth practicing. And uh, knock off the corners to make it look nice and neat. So I will repeat that on the other side as well. I'm going down to quite a dull red heat, and that just makes the metal a bit tougher to forge and uh, planishes it, helps remove any other hammer marks. So there we go, both sides forged section, nice and even, no hammer marks, reasonably smooth. I'll probably have gone over it with a flatter if it was for a um, professional job, but it's just a 
10 minute YouTube video so you guys will just have to imagine I did it neatly so next quench off either side of the apex because you just want the apex to bend over the corner of the anvil notice that I'm hitting on the cold parts uh, to save marking the hot bit so you get you probably get a bit of a bend but if you cool off one of the sections to stop it from bending you can hit straight down on it and push the bent section flat and then I'll finish off in the vise so the same I've cooled down one of the sections which is relatively straight and the bent section I will just come straight down on that's my face, it's been a long day, quite dirty you can see, still concentrating. So you can see that's starting to square up, uh, but I want a bit more mass there so I'll just use the ball peen to take out some of the thickness and add to the width. And as you can see that gives you a bit of a swelling which you will then forge out in the direction that you want and in this case I'm going to drag it towards the corner so you can see that I'm pulling the hammer blows towards me and the other direction I'm pushing them away from me to get the material to go into the corner and then you can also pop over to the bic dress the radius a bit uh, and just make sure that everything's sitting square and uh, looks nice and smart I'm letting the heat bleed out just because like I said before that allows me to planish the material I'm literally just faffing here trying to get it to look as smart as I can in the given time scale knocking off the corners Always looks a bit smarter, and there we go. One radius square corner. They're quite good for window frames, brackets, all sorts of things. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Those of you who stay till the end, and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.